Hi, welcome back to MS247365. It's really great to see you. A um, couple of things. I have an announcement that I'm going to be making in this video uh, about Midway. So stick around. Um, and I want to thank you guys. I am almost at 200 subscribers and to me that's just mind-blowing. Uh, today I would like to, you know, talk about MS relapse recognition and that kind of stuff. Um, multiple sclerosis is an unpredictable disease and right when you think that you have it all figured out and what to expect from day to day, you get hit with a flare-up. And sometimes sometimes it's called a relapse or an exacerbation or an episode or a bout, um, <laughs> but it doesn't matter what you call it, uh, you can never really be prepared for it when it does show up. So like I said, MS is unpredictable and with it comes relapses. So is there anything we can do to prepare for the inevitable uh, flare-up relapse? Well yes and no. While we know we're going to have them, uh, we don't always know exactly when. That's not always predictable. Like I know there's a 75% chance that between Thanksgiving and New Year's, I'll probably experience some sort of a relapse. Um, it may be mild, and it might happen, you know, the day after Thanksgiving, or it might be severe and happen the day before Christmas. But with the knowledge that comes with my 26 years of, you know, MS, I've pretty much, I mean, I know I'm pretty much guaranteed that something's going to happen. Um, the stress of the holidays, the expectations, the everything, uh, it's all prime flare-up combination. Um, and as I've gotten older, I know that in order to minimize my stress, I let my extended family and family know how much or how little I feel like I can handle. Um, and for the most part, they understand that there's a good chance I will have to bow out of one or two holiday whatnots. Um, and I've done a couple of videos on how I handle the holidays. I'll put a link either um, over here or in the description. Um, and, okay. So you did everything you could to uh, reduce your stress. You're eating healthy, you're getting frequent rest, and yet you get that signal you get, you know, well, that's assuming you get some sort of a heads up just before you have relapse. I do. Um, I have secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, so my relapses don't really present the same way as with, um, you know, like relapsing remitting. I don't really need a noticeable relapse to have increased system symptoms um, and until March or April of 2021 I hadn't had a new symptom for quite a while. Um, my already established symptoms will just worsen or increase in occurrence. Here lately symptoms that I had in the early days, first few years, have come back. Most noticeably is the phantom hair across my nose. I used to get that a lot in the first few years after my diagnosis and it was one of the signals I would get that I needed to rest and was, you know, getting tired, or too tired. Um, I seldom listened, but, you know, okay, so what, the feeling of a hair across my nose, what made that really so particular and how I knew it was not an, like, actual hair, um, in the first year or so of my, after my diagnosis, I used to shave my head weekly with no guard on the clippers. And so the chances of one of my hairs, you know, randomly falling across my nose in the exact same way every time, it was slim to none. Um, you're probably <laughs> thinking right now, hey, I thought this was a video about how to recognize a relapse, not your weird hair problems. <laughs> and I say to you, you're not wrong. I do tend to ramble. So let's try and get me back on track. Um, all right. In the words of an MS website, a relapse or flare-up is when inflammation is occurring along the nerves and the myelin, causing people with MS to have a temporary worsening or recurrence of existing symptoms and or the appearance of new symptoms. 
That's what they say. Now, also, relapses only occur in relapsing remitting, progressive relapsing, and occasionally with secondary progressive. If you happen to have primary progressive multiple sclerosis, relapses don't occur. You just have a fluctuation in how you feel day to day. Um, also, to be considered an actual relapse, symptoms have to last longer than 24 hours. And typically, a relapse can last anywhere from a few days to months. Um, and as if it's not unpredictable enough, we can also have what are called pseudo exacerbations. Those are what it's called when uh, the relapse is caused by some other influence and not new activity. Apparently the most common cause of this is a urinary tract infection, but they usually subside and clear up within 24 hours. Not the infection, the relapse like symptoms. Good to know, right? So, let's see. It's only a relapse. If there's new activity, it lasts longer than 24 hours. Um, you don't have to have new symptoms for it to be considered a relapse, but you might. So what are some other signals of a flare-up? Good question. I think we should talk about it. But first, <laughs> I said there would be an announcement in this video, so here it is. I'm going to be streaming live on my Twitch channel, um, which is Twitch TV slash Kawigma or Kawijima. It's a charity stream to support National Multiple Sclerosis Society. I hope you can join me on March 13th, 2022, about 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for my stream to end MS March Together. I will put a link in the description up here and uh, I hope to see you. Now, where was I? <laughs> yeah, relapse. Since MS presents in so many different ways to each patient, um, the guidelines set up for when you should call your MS care team for a relapse are really vague and they contain a lot of for the most part or your mileage may vary innuendos. But here's some of the criteria I found to let you know whether you should call your MS care team about a possible relapse. The newer recurring symptoms has been present for at least 24 hours. If it's been less than 24 hours, but your symptoms are severe and could affect your health or safety, you should also call. You do not have a fever or any other signs of an infection, for example, urinary tract infection. Your body is not overheated, which may result from the temperature around you, like, you know, in the middle of summer, um, or if you just were exercising, etc. You know, you haven't overexerted yourself today and done too much. Or, and you're not having a um, unusually stressful day. Then they immediately go on to tell you that you shouldn't disregard your any symptoms for any of the above mentioned reasons either. In my 26 year informed opinion, you know your body and your MS better than any other person, regardless of how many letters they have after their name. And if you think it's a relapse, chances are it is. Um, I also ask my husband, and when they live at home, my children, if they think I'm having a flare-up because uh, they know me almost as well as I know myself, and depending on what symptoms I'm having right now, they might know me better. Um, okay, so now we know if we're having a flare-up or not. And if not, yay you. Disregard all this next stuff because no re relapse equals no relapse treatment. Lucky. Most relapses will subside on their own over time. The length of time really depends on the severity of the flare-up. Um, if it's severe and causing a lot of difficulties in performing daily tasks or harmful to your personal safety, your doctor may put you on a three to five day course of a corticosteroid. Usually it's solumedrol, that's an IV solution of methylprednisolone. That's the most commonly prescribed treatment for a relapse, um, but there are others. You may be put on a taper dose of, say, prednisone or decadron. I've used solumedrol for the majority of my relapses that require treatment. Um, I have used the prednisone, but I really don't, I really don't like that. Um, solum besides solumedrol is only three to five days and prednisone can be five to 12 days or more depending on the taper strength. Um, okay, wait, why do they put us on a cortical steroid? 
I mean, what even is that? Isn't that what they use to treat severe allergic reactions? Yes. Yes, it is. But in higher doses, it can affect immune system responses and activity, which is what an MS flare-up is. Your immune system makes it mistakes your central nervous system for the scoundrel and attacks it. So, for instance, you catch a cold. In non-MS patients, their immune system goes after the cells causing the cold or illness and get rid of them. In MS patients, the immune system may or may not target the cold and instead goes after the central nervous system. The introduction of high doses of corticosteroids will shut down the immune system and therefore stop the attack, which then hopefully shortens the recovery time. I'll say that in my experience, I have no idea how or if it works, but I trust my doctor and if they say it works and it doesn't make me worse, I'm all for it. So that's pretty much it. Uh, relapses, flare-up, exacerbation, bout, episode, they're all the same thing. You'll hear the different words, but they're all the same thing. They happen with and without warning. They affect every MS patient differently. Unpredictable and sneaky. MS is kind of the alligator of the disease world. Just lying there, all silent-like, waiting for your central nervous system to wander by, minding its own business, and then chomp, got him. Sorry. Sorry. I get a little get a little heated. Um, I do have another video that I'm going to do where, where I'm going to talk about what maybe you could do to keep that relapse at bay, at least for a little while. Um, but for the most part, that's it uh, for today. Uh, remember my stream on March 13th, and I hope to see you there. Uh, this has been... A little different for me. I have a new setup that I'm using and I kind of like it. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you want to keep up with my videos, hit the subscribe button. If you want to know when I post, uh, hit the notifications on. Thanks for showing up. Uh, thanks for being here. And um, I hope to see you on Twitch in March. Remember, life doesn't stop just because you have to. <laughs>